Hello everyone, I'm Claudia Otero from the Marketing Communications Department here at Salinas Valley Memorial Healthcare System. This has been an extremely tough couple of weeks as the coronavirus COVID-19 outbreak has deeply affected Monterey County, the state of California, the entire nation, and many, many countries around the world. Now it's truly an unprecedented time for us all. Taking care of one another in addition to the patients we serve is extremely important important. Now, to help us with that part of the conversation, we've invited an expert to join us who some of you may already know, Dr. Catherine Hambly. Now, Catherine, thanks for joining me today. For those who might not know you, uh, tell us a little bit about your background and what is it that you do for Salinas Valley Memorial sure, Healthcare sure. System. Yeah, great, great to be here, Claudia. I feel privileged to have the opportunity to speak with everyone. Yeah, my background actually started in healthcare. I was a nurse, uh, started in the, emer in the ICU and then moved into the emergency, emergency department and did that for several years and then went back to grad school, decided to become a psychologist Psychologist, had a clinical psychology practice, so again, still very much connected to healthcare. And then about 15 years ago, moved into the consulting world, uh, started my own company, Brain Based Strategies Consulting, where I really try to help organizations, leaders, teams, individuals leverage our understanding of the brain to improve communication, improve interactions, and most importantly, to help people do their best thinking. I've been very fortunate to work with Salinas Valley Memorial Healthcare System, that's a mouthful, um, <laughs> for, boy, at least five or six years now. Um, I've worked all the way from uh, working with developing leaders, leadership programs, helping with uh, developing and delivering feedback uh, classes to, to the nursing department, and now we're rolling it out to the whole hospital. Of course, it's in a little bit of a limbo right now with, with priorities being obviously shifted. I've worked with teams helping to develop greater psychological safety. I've helped people collaborate a little bit better together and also been working on some um, employee engagement factors to, to help improve employee engagement. So it's really been a wonderful journey here with the hospital. It sounds like it has, and we thank you for being here today. I know that you'll be helping us um, throughout this uh, epidemic, or pandemic, I should say. Um, we definitely need your help. So let's get started. A lot has happened recently, we all know that. There's a stay-at-home order in place for everyone except essential workers, and we're seeing our first positive patients, not just in Monterey County, but also at Salinas Valley Memorial. The economy is in shambles. There's a lot going on and sure it's got to take a toll on people. Yes, it does. It really does. And I think it's so important what you just said that it takes a toll for us all to realize that mostly everybody's experienced heightened levels of stress, anxiety, fear, helplessness, and now isolation for some people. And when we try to understand it a little bit with the brain, it's important to know that when we experience those kinds of emotions, our brain is in a threatened state. And so we're much more, uh, some to use the term trigger happy, we just are much more reactive. Um, and, and it's important now to think about being intentional about using strategies to mitigate, mitigate stress and learn how to cope a little bit better. And speaking of strategies and coping better, what can our employees do to cope better when they're at work? Well, when they're at work, I think there are, there are a number of things that can happen. I think first and foremost is recognize that it is really normal to feel a host of emotions. Um, as I mentioned, fear, anxiety, but also sometimes guilt, sometimes a feeling of isolation, rejection, helplessness, there's nothing I can do. So a lot of, a lot of emotions going on that can cause acute stress. Um, so one is just recognizing that if, the, if you're feeling any of these feelings, it's perfectly normal. I think the other thing is to recognize that we all experience them differently that it's really okay to ask for help. As a matter of fact, it's really important to ask for help and to uh, use stress. So I, I encourage people to try and identify what are some of the signals you get when you're starting to feel stressed and use those signals. For example, some people's fists tighten, sometimes they feel it in their jaws, sometimes they notice their stomach clenching up or their heart pounding. Use those signals as a time to say, okay, I need to now stop and do something to mitigate, to cope with this stress. One of the best things that people can do 
is literally take what, I, what I'd like to call a mindful minute. Take a moment away and just do some slow, deep, focused breathing. It's amazing what it does to calm, calm the limbic system in the brain and to help us sort of recenter. So that's one of the things you can do. The other is, um, interestingly, is um, acts of kindness and gratitude, being grateful are things that actually help us cope better and help our immune system. I think some of the other things that people can do to cope is try to keep things in perspective. A lot of times when we're experiencing heightened levels of fear and anxiety, things start to feel exaggerated. Sometimes we can engage in what we call catastrophic thinking and learning how to kind of stop and, and notice what we're saying to ourselves so we can begin to change our perspective a little bit. For example, the things that the hospital are doing to help protect the employees is one way to realize we have protocols in place. Those kinds of things can help reduce some of our anxiety and our stress. So we know what we can do when we are at work. What can people do when they're not at work, when they're at home? What can they do to relieve some of that stress? And the other thing that we have to think about is that routines have changed for all of us, right? So. Can you share a little bit of your um, perspective yeah, on yeah, that? Yeah, I would love to. And just, just before I go to the away from home, the, the last thing I wanted to say at work is I think there are things that we can do as colleagues at work that can be really helpful. I really encourage teams to have regular check-ins where they're just checking in with each other, how are we doing right now, to take time. Sometimes, again, we all experience stress differently and some people may need a break where others are coping just fine and to really begin to rely on each other as support systems and to be able to say, hey, is there something I can do to help you right now, if, if that's indeed what's needed. Perhaps I'm getting out of work at five, I'm gonna to go to the grocery store, do you need me to pick something up for you because I know you're working t until 5 a.m. or right, something along right. those lines. Right, or in the moment to say, listen, I got it covered, why don't you go take a five minute break? Sometimes that's all that people need to just kind of the Get smallest there. things. Yeah, yeah, just to get back. But in terms of away from of work, you mentioned a really important point, and that's routine. What they find is that when people start having a routine that they practice kind of religiously, day in and day out, it helps with stress. And, and there's three big things that I really encourage with stress management. One is, as I mentioned, is sort of taking mindful minutes. So. We know that people who practice some form of mindfulness or direct attention experience less stress. We can actually build resiliency to stress, so that's one of them. The other is sleep. Now, of course, a lot of people are saying, yeah, but my sleep is really messed up right now, but the more things you can do to try and get regular sleep, um, a lot of times that means avoiding caffeine, avoiding doing things that um, get you more aroused before bedtime, those sorts of things, just using the bed for sleeping, not for being on our digital devices. Um, so mindfulness, sleep, and exercise. Exercise is another huge one. And those three things we know build greater resiliency. Diet is really important, having a routine with your diet. As I say, avoiding excess alcohol, avoiding excess caffeine are really important. Practicing gratitude. It actually helps a lot. Recognizing that our emotions are contagious both at home and at work and so how we show up can make a really big difference. Acts of kindness and compassion help decrease stress and um, help improve our immunity. Laughter, finding even in this really tough time we all need to find some opportunity to laugh and to sort of get out of ourselves a little bit. Again, it's a great strategy for developing more stress resiliency. Yeah, the other thing that's really helpful for managing stress is watching our self-talk. We engage in a lot of self-talk all the time, and I think when the more stressed we are, often the more kind of catastrophic or anxiety producing is our stress talk. So I encourage people to have some kind of statement or image that they have or belief that they have for themselves that they, when they catch themselves feeling stressed that they can actually embody it for a few minutes. It might just be, 
I'm calm and relaxed, or I can cope, or whatever. Um, my mother used to tell me, my mother doesn't live here, and she, whenever she would come visit, we would go to Carmel Beach, and she used to say, anytime I'm stressed, I get this image of the beach, and it just relaxes me. So, so using those kind of strategies, some people find journaling or drawing, if you're, mm -hmm. if you're artistic and, and like to get, get some of your stress out that way, can be really helpful as well. Sure, absolutely. If you have pets at home, playing with pets, them, maybe stopping yeah. whatever you're doing and just spending a few minutes with them. Pets have been shown, yes, also to help with stress resiliency. The other thing that's really helpful is making sure you connect with people. Now, of course, that's a little more challenging now that we've been asked to avoid right. our contact with people in this day and age of um, things like Zoom and FaceTime, right. there's lots of ways to connect. And so I really encourage people, don't get too isolated. Reach out to people, even if it's virtually, so that right. you support systems are so critical at these times. And probably also um, even check in on people that you haven't spoken with or seen in a long time, right? Now is a perfect time to do that. It's a perfect, I've been doing a lot of that lately. And realize too that some of the people, I, I have a friend of mine, she's almost 90 years old, she's in a a care facility and they don't let anybody mm -hmm. in and they don't let anybody out and I've been really making a point of checking in on her and, and just That's touching good. bases on a regular basis That's good. and it feels good for her it feels good for me too right. and so those are all ways we can help reduce our our stress oh, good great advice something that I didn't do this past uh, weekend was actually watch the news because it was really bringing me down um, and I know I'm not the only one but people want to know what's going on they're going on their laptops they're reading about it what can you what, what can you say about that how do we cope with that or stopping ourselves from doing yeah. too much of that well you bring up a great point Claudia and it's really important to we, we all need our news we all need to know what's going right. on right. but we also know that too much time on our digital devices actually impairs our immunity it makes it harder for our bodies to fight disease and it can really increase our stress I would encourage people to have a certain time and maybe maybe it's two or three times a day where they check in see how things are whatever mm -hmm. they need to catch mm -hmm. up on and then put it away so that we're not constantly going back to reading the news and all the things that are out there and you might just choose one or two sources that you trust mm -hmm. and right. and again just limit your time now that's very important advice because I know that we're all doing that or have been for a long time now it seems anyways. Um, what, do, what can someone do, uh, this is a really important question, if they see a coworker who is struggling and how can you support someone else? How do you yeah. approach them? Yeah, so the first thing is don't shy away. Oftentimes when we see someone struggling because we don't know what to say, we'll often say nothing. But instead just acknowledge what you see, check in with them hey, it looks like you're having a hard time coping right now. Um, is there any way that I could be helpful for you? One of the things, as I've mentioned before, is we all experience stress differently. So it's, it's important when we acknowledge what we see is to be careful that we're not in some way judging it or, to, or trying to negate it. Oh, you're going to be okay. You know, platitudes are not, not helpful at this time, but genuine interest in how someone's doing. Interestingly, when people label emotions, it actually tends to calm that emotion down, to calms our limbic system, the part of our brain that um, reacts when we feel threatened. So even just helping someone label what they're experiencing, asking how you can be supportive. Again, our, our tendency is we want to help people in the way that we think we would want to be helped and that's not always helpful and so asking people what would be most supportive right now is there anything I could do to be helpful for you and and really try and get specifics um, again as we talked about before if we notice a co-worker having a tough time if it's possible offer to give them a break for a few minutes and just say hey if you need some time please please know I'm here and and take the time that you need and, and again often it's only a few minutes and people are able to kind of get back to, to a better place. I also think just reminding people to keep things in perspective um, is helpful. Again, we have to be careful that we're not um, invalidating or, or trivializing what they're feeling, but trying to help them turn, sort of turn to some of the perspective taking that can be really helpful. Do you have any special advice for our leaders? As you know, our administration has been very busy uh, leading this hospital and uh, they are under stress. Um, and also, uh, how 
do they support their own teams? Yeah, so I, I do have some advice for leaders. I actually think right now um, some of people's leadership styles may need to shift. Uh, this is now more of a time of what I call facilitative leadership. It's recognizing that the best thing we can do is help people to cope productively with the feelings that they're having. So um, I have a few steps for leaders. Please uh, share them. <laughs> yeah, so the first one would be to acknowledge, again, kind of like I said with a coworker, I think as leaders being able to acknowledge to individuals and even to teams, like I know this is a really stressful time, um, I, I know this is impacting all of you differently, but just really being there. Uh, the second one would be taking more time for check-ins. Uh, again, just how are, you, how are you coping with this? Asking questions like how are you doing doesn't tend, you know, we tend to respond, oh, I'm doing just fine, right? But asking questions like I know this is a really stressful, challenging time. I know it, imp I'm, I'm curious to hear how it's impacting you. What can I do that might be supportive? Those kinds of questions, one, show that you care, but two, are more likely to elicit responses that are actually helpful. Mm -hmm. um, the third thing that I would rec recommend is really taking time to listen with presence. Again, we're really busy. This mm -hmm. is a hectic time. Taking a moment to actually stop and listen to somebody can be enormously helpful. The other thing I, is around transparency. We don't have all the answers right now. We, mm -hmm. as, as everybody knows, things are changing, Very not just day by day, but hour by hour, sometimes yes. minute by minute. And so letting people know what you can share with them. Mm -hmm. Also, transparency is about just self-disclosure. It's okay for leaders to say, you know, this is a difficult time for me too. It makes you more human. And relatable. Yes. Mm -hmm. And finally, facilitate sort of um, what I call a solution focus to to the situation. So getting people to begin think about to think about what are some strategies that would help manage stress right now. So um, just facilitating those kind of conversations. Again, being careful not to minimize or, or negate what people are feeling and, and very importantly recognizing that people deal with stress differently and the only way you're going to know how they deal with it is by asking them. Very good advice. Thank you for that. Catherine, um, as you know, our community is reeling, hurting, yes. uh, a lot going on. How do we need to adjust to best support our patients and their families as they're coming into our facilities? Um, obviously, you know that there are restrictions in place. Uh, so it, it's tough because if someone is staying in their hospital, if they're in ICU not related to COVID-19, obviously they would want their family there and vice versa, right? So Absolutely. let's talk a little about that. Yeah, yeah. I think, again, it's really important as employees at the hospital to remember that the pa our patients and their loved ones are all experiencing increased stress and, a, and probably a myriad of emotions. And the most important thing that we can do is look at proactively look for strategies to mitigate some of that stress and help minimize some of the emotions. So this is a time to acknowledge. Now acknowledging doesn't mean I agree with how you feel. So for example, if, if um, a family member is upset because they're not allowed to come in to visit and they're angry, the best thing we can do is acknowledge that anger. I can understand that this feels unfair or that it's really hard for you to not be able to see your family member right now. Please know that we're taking these measures to protect you and the rest of the community. Those kinds of things can be really helpful. It's, it's understanding where people are coming from. Again, not trying to take away what they're feeling, but also be careful we don't get too defensive because sometimes when we're triggered, any of us, we're not our best selves. <laughs> we're more in a reactive mode than we are thinking about how we're coming across. And I think what the, the more we can show our patients and their visitors that we care and we're doing everything possible, I think the better off everybody's going to be. And showing a little bit of compassion, too. We can't Definitely. forget about compassion. For, without a doubt, compassion helps them, and it helps the giver of compassion. The, the one that's giving the compassion can be really helped right. as well. And I think it's really important to highlight that the restrictions are there in place, as you mentioned, because we want to keep our patients safe and mm -hmm. their visitors are also our staff. Absolutely. So our staff yeah. is very important. Without yeah. them, we can't take care of anybody. Right? So. Yeah. Yes. Okay. 
And uh, what is the most uh, important advice you would give to SVMH, um, to the workforce at the hospital, and maybe some general advice to the public as well? Yeah, let's start with the employees, definitely. And the first thing that I would remind people of is that when we're in the helping profession, we often, are fo we often focus on helping others, and we tend to neglect ourselves a little bit. And so one of the things that is really important to remember. You're not going to be any good to others if you're not good to yourself. So a proactive approach to self-care is really, really important. Also focusing on what you can control versus what's out of your control helps people cope a little better. So recognizing the thing, for example, the things that you're doing to um, help the patients, the things that you're doing to help yourself manage stress, those kinds of things help people help mitigate some of those feelings of helplessness that we often get. Um, getting out of yourself a little bit can be helpful. Real, it's, we talked about compassion right. can be really helpful. Thinking about the skills and talents that you have and how you can best use them at this time. Sharing compassion. Those are all things that help us get a little out of ourselves and help us cope better with the situation. So that, that would be my advice for employees. And for the public? Yeah, for the public, uh, a lot of what we've already talked about, I think, is really apropos for the public as well. The other thing that I would remind people of is that with this pandemic, our world has shifted and a lot of our behaviors have shifted. And understanding that we are trying to get people to do what we call hard wiring change, creating new habits. And the brain can actually create new habits, but it takes lots of repetition. So whereas we used to shake hands when we met right. someone or give someone a hug, we now have to keep our distance. Right. Um, and it's okay to remind them. I want to stay back a little bit yes. because we're doing things differently. Yes, now. absolutely. It's okay to say that. It's okay to do that. And so I think practicing new habits is going to be really important for people to cope and to, as you say, share with each other and help each other practice new habits. So we don't share drinking glasses or we don't pass things from one person to the other without cleaning them. Those sorts of things can be really helpful. Stay connected. Really avoid isolation. At times like this, we need others and and virtual connection can be enormously helpful if we can't do it face to face. There are a lot of people who are out of a job now because of this pandemic, locally, all over the country, all over the world. What would your advice be to our Central Coast community? Or our home yeah. now. And that my hearts my hearts go out to everybody who is experiencing the financial hardship of not not having a job and not knowing what the future holds. And again, that can create a lot of fear, anxiety, depression, helplessness. And so I encourage people, while it's not easy to try and take it one day at a time, we don't know what's going to happen. And the best we can do is focus on the here and now, try and be there for each other, engage in acts of kindness, engage in self-care, and, um, and take it day by day. I, I know it's really, it's a hard thing. It's easier said than done but it definitely is a helpful thing that you can do. It's, it's some of that perspective taking too of just what can I do today to make today a better day. A better day. Is there anything you would wanna share with our um, Salinas Valley Memorial Healthcare providers who are working um, long hours, are working very hard, some of them on the front lines, um, seeing and, and evaluating some of these possible COVID 19 patients, um, so it, it's uh, unprecedented. What would you want to say to them? It certainly is very unprecedented. What I'd want to say to them is recognize how appreciated you are, and that's again, in this time of stress, you may not be given accolades, you may not be told how much you're appreciated, but I know it's there. It's, it's remembering to take care of yourself and take care of each other. It's, this is a time where you can really. Uh, bond together and, and find ways to help our colleagues cope, recognizing again that we all cope differently. And so there's, there's a lot of value in, in coming together, helping to create a more positive ad, attitude at work, those kinds of things, remembering that emotions are contagious and asking yourself, what, what emotion do I want to be most contagious today? Fear and anxiety or um, encouragement 
and an opportunity to recognize what we are contributing in such a positive way to, to this terrible situation that's going on right now. And even though you may not get appreciation necessarily from patients and or family, one of the things that you can do is share appreciation with one another. Uh, I've done this a lot in workshops and some of the people listening to this video will have attended some of my workshops and they know the power of just receiving genuine, specific, positive feedback. That's a gift you can give each other. It's quick, it's easy, and it's enormously powerful. So I would encourage people to do that. It's gonna make them feel good and it's gonna make you feel good. Not only are emotions contagious, the other thing that's contagious is generosity and gratitude. Those are things, again, that are very easy to practice and um, can have a very power, powerful effect on each other and on oneself. Well, I think that's gonna be my phrase for the week and maybe for the rest of the year. Emotions are contagious. So it's something that we all need to think about as we move forward, okay. Well, thank you, Catherine. We really appreciate your expertise. Well, for everyone watching, we hope this has provided some helpful information. Please take care of yourselves during this very difficult time and please take care of each other.